where you are that mattered it is not how low in the spiritual ladder you are that matters what matters is which direction are you moving in never mind how bad you are as long as you are moving towards development sooner or later you'll get there but if you are good and you're going in reverse gear then there's a problem so as you perform your obligatory duties as you perform karma yoga bhakti yoga and jnana yoga and you're focusing on correcting your faults and your um, imperfections sooner or later you'll get there provided you consult the compass of the shastras and your intellect is alert and focused on getting to the shore of immortality so as you progress you'll reach the harbor of peace and in that harbor of peace where you're protected from the lashes of the ocean the waters you meditate and cross over to the shore of immortality this is a metaphor that is very popular in the shastras next verse 37 yathai dhamsi samedhogni he bhasmasat kuru terjuna जस्ट एज एनकिंडल्ड फायर रिड्यूसिस फ्यूल टू एशेज ओ अर्जुना सो डज द फायर ऑफ नॉलेज कन्वर्ट ऑल एक्शन टू एशेज दिस वर्स डील्स विद द इफेक्ट ऑफ रियलाइजेशन ऑन योर वासनास intellect mind vasanas vasanas is ignorance of the self you remember we started by saying that the basic problem with us is ignorance delusion delusion that there is a world where there is only atman brahman and because you imagine a world that is traumatizing you that is uh, victimizing you you're suffering just as where there is a rope if you see a snake then you suffer the consequences of the snake bite and all the rest of it and that suffering will not go until you understand that there is a rope so there are two stages of removal of this ignorance or removal of vasanas and this is first stage is where your vasanas are charred the desires are still there but they it's like seeds you know when you roast seeds what happens the seed is there but it loses its ability to germinate and create more it's the same with vasanas with your desires as long as the desires have the capacity to multiply then you're in trouble if the desire is there but it loses its ability to to germinate and cause more desires then you're fine so the first step to spiritual development is charring your desires where the world no longer has the temptation no longer has the power to lure you into indulgence today the world you know we are vulnerable to the forces of the world we are vulnerable to the temptations of the world therefore we have to watch out therefore our intellect has to come in place and supervise guide every interaction with the world because you have no idea where you will slip and get carried away but once you with the spiritual knowledge you understand the futility of worldly temptations then you can be right in the middle of world of sense indulgence you will not budge that's the first step the second step is where your vasanas are burnt to ashes means once you reach the state of realization then nothing in the world will tempt you just as once you wake up from the dream to the waking state even if you were to gain reentry into the same dream nothing in the dream will will tempt you nothing in the dream will lure you why because you are firm in the conviction that it is an illusion it's the same here so once you wake up you won't get once you wake up to the fourth state of consciousness you won't get caught up in this world and then 
you will every aspect of your experience in the world will be enjoyable this was krishna's experience nothing kept him down nothing depressed him nothing kept his spirits low he was in a state of constant excitement exhilaration joy and cheer and this is what you and i are heir to so if you're not in that state if you're not constantly in a state of cheer then it means there's something wrong with us so uh just as enkindled fire reduces fuel to ashes so does the fire of knowledge convert all actions to ashes so you have to decide what you want do you want just relief from desire or you want complete freedom from desire if you want relief from desire just a little bit of knowledge is enough you'll get the freedom if you want realization then you have to invest much more effort so knowledge is acts like fire it purifies your system completely 38 nahi dhyane na sadrsham pavitramiha vidyate tat svayam yoga samsiddhah kale natmani vindati verily there is nothing as purifying as wisdom one who is well perfected in yoga finds it in the self in course of time so here he is talking about two stages of self purification the first stage is atma shuddhi where you are performing the three yogas you you are pursuing with the spiritual practices not with the idea of self realization just with the idea of self improvement the second stage is where you are focused on self realization nothing else will deter you from the goal it's like hanuman hanuman was so focused on rama that he couldn't care less for anything in the world and when they gained victory over ravana in lanka they had a celebration and in that celebration they wanted to acknowledge the role that invaluable role that hanuman played in the whole scheme of things so they offered him a necklace away made of precious stones he took out the necklace put it to his ear the necklace didn't say ram he threw it he had no value for it so these are the two stages but you and i will say anyway we are part of the world so you must take you know compromise so what he's saying here is there is nothing as purifying as wisdom one who is well perfected one who has reached that state of zeroing in on the goal finds it in the self in course of time kalena he is, krishna is a diplomat he doesn't want to specify how long it will take as you and i are interested how long will it be before i gain realization he said don't worry kalena but it is true it's like if you set off from here and you say how long will it take to get to chandigarh by the time you sit here and analyze you'll never start moving so the person who's interested in your welfare will say just start moving sooner or later you'll get there isn't that true that's what he's saying 39 shraddha vallabhate jnanam tat para sanyate indriyah jnanam labdha param shantim achirenaadhigachati one who is endowed with shraddha faith who is devoted and who has controlled the senses obtains knowledge having obtained knowledge such a one soon attains supreme peace so how to gain this knowledge is the question You see, he's already told us. Now he's only concluding. The last few verses, 38 to 42, is nothing but a shot in the arm. He says, "Therefore, the smart gain wisdom." So, how do you gain this wisdom? He's summarizing. First is sanyate indriya, subdue the senses. Self-control is not self-denial. We have misunderstood the message of the Gita as self-denial, and therefore the young don't want to come anywhere near the Bhagavad Gita. because they believe their enjoyment will be taken away who are the people who come to the bhagavad gita i don't mean here uh, normally 
people who ha- are so old that they no longer have the ability to enjoy the senses, then they want to come to the Gita. <laughs> it's absurd. The Gita, in fact, empowers you to enjoy the world. Indulgence does not lead to enjoyment. Indulgence leads to a complete flat uh, thing where you don't enjoy at all. It's like you keep eating. Have you seen a, a glutton? The more he eats, the less he enjoys. There is no enjoyment there. You just eat, gobbles things up. Any enjoyment, you can enjoy it only when you learn the Gita, only when you learn the art of regulated contact with the sense objects. And it is this regulated contact that leads to enjoyment such that you enjoy the object exactly as you did the first time you contacted it till the last day of your life. In other words, the honeymoon never gets over. You understand what it is? I'm not talking about actual honeymoon. Honeymoon, (laughs) and that also. Honeymoon with the world. Honeymoon with every aspect. What is honeymoon? Honeymoon is nothing but the thrill, the kick you get in the first contact. Problem with us is the honeymoon ends before the honeymoon actually finishes. Here, regulated contact. So this is subduing the senses. This is control of the senses. Next is tat paraha, person who is devoted. Devotion is extremely important. Devotion lends a flavor to your life, lends a flavor to your actions that is incomparable with anything else. Anything you do with devotion excels. Take the example, when there is a puja in the home and you uh, cook prasad, you make prasad at home, yeah? That prasad is so delicious and you have no idea why it, it's, it comes out so delicious. The children enjoy it. The next day, once the prasad gets over, the next day they say, Mama, will you please make the same thing that you made yesterday? The same mama uses the same ingredients and cooks it in the same way. But it doesn't come out the same. Why? Because one day before, she had cooked it as prasad for the Lord. Cooked it with devotion. Devotion is a very important ingredient in in things. And therefore it came out excellent. The following day she cooked it not with devotion. With a sense of Oh God, again these kids have asked me to do it. That's finished, that's gone. Similarly, every action that you perform, whether it's whether you're sending an email to someone, you're writing a letter to somebody, you're, you're answering a telephone call, whatever it is that you're doing, if you do it with devotion, it will be par excellence. And of course, you'll evolve spiritually. And Shraddha is intellectual focus. The capacity to garner all your resources together and redirect them towards the higher the capacity of the intellect to take in fresh knowledge, ponder over it, think over it, contemplate upon it, do not let go of it until it becomes a part of you, you live it. That is called Shraddha. And if you do all this, such a one soon attains supreme peace. 40. Adnyascha Shraddha Samshayatma vinashyati Nayam lokostina paraha Nasukham samshayatmanaha So the ignorant, devoid of shraddha faith, the doubting self is destroyed. The doubting self has neither this world nor the next nor happiness. So in here, in 39, he said how to gain the knowledge. In this verse, he says, if you don't follow it, you'll get destroyed. You will neither gain success, nor will you gain happiness, nor will you move to the next plane of consciousness, nor will you improve spiritually. 41, the next verse, he says, if you follow it, all your actions will not bind you. And the last verse, he concludes magnificently, Tasma, therefore, follow this advice. So, here, 
he is saying this no the ignorant ignorant is not an illiterate person ignorant is one who is ignorant of the tremendous potential that lies within each one of us if you are oblivious of what you were born for if you have no idea of the tremendous advantages that you were born with and how to leverage them to get to the highest level of spiritual development then you are a total ignorant person you could be a phd you could be an mba you could be whatever it is such a person is ignorant and because of your ignorance you have no shraddha there is no dedicated pursuit of any goal leave alone the truth you take something on a whim or fancy have you seen the way people behave uh, here particularly the young it's not their fault because they have no sense of direction based on some whim they take to some business some job some uh, line of uh, education and by the same whim drop it so if you speak to somebody every 6 months is changing his vocation his job his the city in which he lives and very soon he starts changing the wife also completely fickle minded no shraddha in anything no sense of commitment you started something you owe it to complete it doesn't matter if you don't like it too bad that sense is not there the shraddha is not there and because the shraddha is not there you fickle minded the doubting self you have doubts in yourself you have doubts in the system you have doubts in your family you doubt how can you survive with such doubts you don't have faith in anybody least of all yourself such a person categorically he says vinashyati will be destroyed it's not that he's cursing anyone he's just stating the law it's like saying if you jump out of the 20th story of a building you will crash to the ground there's no doubt about it it's, it's impossible that you'll escape similarly if you have n- not only are you ignorant you have no idea that you're ignorant you have no desire to get out of that ignorance completely devoid of shraddha and you're constantly sitting there doubting fickle minded such a person will neither get this world he will not achieve success he will not be happy nor will he evolve spiritually so you decide what you want you have a choice if you follow it he is giving it uh, he's given the uh, the prescription if you follow it you will get all three you will be successful in the world you will be happy and you will evolve spiritually if you don't follow it you're doomed you won't get any of these three the choice is yours is what he say 41 ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் டூ நாட் பைண்ட் ஒன் ஹூ ஹேஸ் ரினாஸ்ட் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் த்ரூ யோகா திஸ் இஸ் நாட் அ டங் ட்விஸ்டர் இட் மேக்ஸ் சென்ஸ் whose doubts are rent asunder by knowledge who is poised in the self o dhananjaya winner of wealth he addresses arjuna and all of us as dhananjaya winner of wealth we are all experts in obtaining the wealth from the world how about accessing this infinite source of wealth that is there inside there's a hint of sarcasm there and then he says actions do not bind one this applies in the relative and the absolute to the extent that you master this practice to that extent you gain liberation from the world yoga sanyasta karmanam you renounce actions by yoga by performance of karma yoga you renounce actions so similarly you identify with the self so the two maladies in the world are avarana ignorance and vikshepa agitation so the first thing that goes is agitation and then the next thing that goes is ignorance doubts are rent asunder by knowledge you gain clarity of thinking clarity of the intellect is absolutely necessary to the extent you have this clarity you know exactly which direction to move in you know what to do you know when to do what to do and how much to do everything becomes clear when your intellect is confused whatever you do is 
is doomed will become a failure because the starting point itself is faulty. Atmavantam, poised in the self. What a beautiful term he uses. You and I are poised, established in stupidity. In imagination. In delusion. And we are quite happy to be there. The first sign of spiritual development is a sense of discontent. You must feel restless with your ignorance. You must feel restless with your imperfections. You must feel discontent with your stupidity. Don't get offended. I am not saying it. The Gita is saying it. Throughout the scriptures, Vimur Atma means a completely stupid person. So, O Dhananjaya, get to the state where actions don't bind you. To the extent that you are focused on the self, Atmavantam, your goal is fixed. To that extent, you get liberation from the lower levels. Look at a person who is dedicated to uh, a sport, dedicated to music, dedicated to art, dedicated to the country, any higher goal. He performs action, but those actions don't bind him. Means he doesn't cultivate further desires. He gets completely freed from the lower desires. We now move to the last verse. yogam. <laughs> Tasmat, therefore, having cut this ignorance born doubt of the self dwelling in your heart with the sword of knowledge, be established in yoga. Arise, O Bharata. What a fabulous way to end this chapter. Uttishta Bharata. Arise. Bharata, he is appealing to all of us. Our culture lies in reveling in Atman. Our culture is not to revel in shopping malls, please. And the sooner we understand that, the most content will be, the happier will be, the most successful will be. We'll, we'll not only help ourselves out of trouble, we'll become a beacon light for the world to follow as we were in the glorious past. And he's giving one last shot in the arm. He says, Uttishta, be established in yoga and arise, awaken to your own glory, to your own level. It does not become you to run after sense objects of the world because you are an Indian. And as a Bharata means, this soil has cultivated the culture of self-knowledge for centuries. It will not go in spite of your best efforts. So the sooner you realize it, the better. Now, with the end of this chapter, we need to capitalize on it. We've reached our, uh, what you call as, moment of inspiration. Don't let it fritter away. Don't let, it, let, don't let go of it. Because by the time, make a commitment to yourself now in a moment of inspiration and follow it up with action. Because by the time tomorrow morning comes, you'll say, oh, it's okay, chapter 4, I've heard it before. No. Grapple it your, to your soul and make a commitment that I will make an effort to rise spiritually. So with this, we end the chapter. Om Iti Shri Madhagavad Gita Supanishatsu Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yogo Nama Chaturtho in, as is the tradition, to signify that this, our study of the scriptures has not ended but only begun, we will together repeat the first verse of the chapter once. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Imam Vivasvate Yogam Proktavanaham Avyayam 
विवस्वान्मनवे प्राह मनुरीक्ष्वा कवे ब्रवीत